followed by a series of utility robots of greater capability, probably larger with manipulator arms that can pick up and retrieve things, put, uh, put them away, uh, do scrub horizontal surfaces, uh, eventually windows, <laughs> um, have toilets, that, that sort of thing. You know, very practical, down, down to earth things. Uh, maybe, you know, there are probably outdoor applications for, for these first utility robots, but gradually, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, it, because there's a large industry, basically, there is, is expected to be a large amount of incremental development. This incremental development, I think, will roughly parallel the uh, evolution of various characteristics in invertebrates in our own lineage. <laughs> um, so by, by maybe as soon as 2010, uh, the, the, these utility robots evolve into uh, something that's, that has a broad enough set of uses, um, each use being determined by an application program. So, so basically you load this thing with an application program to do some simple chore, and there's a lot of application programs available. It's a universal robot, first generation. Um, well, the the, um, the 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 idea is that, uh, this again is a fantasy design at this point, um, but the idea the idea is that okay we're, we're almost there um, that the this uh, this this shaft is a, is a bus that is both a mechanical bus for supporting various peripherals uh, here a small arm a large arm and, and a sensor head. Uh, and the, the bus is, by the way, also electrical and, uh, and, con and sends data to these things. The, the, the power and the, uh, most of the computing is probably in the base. The bus can be extended, which is what the robot is doing right at this moment. It's extending its own potential height. And, and these uh, peripherals mechanically can ride up and down on, on the bus. <laughs> and this seems like a very nice modular way to, to do this, you can add more arms or more, more sensors or different kinds of sensors. And the robot, most of the time, can do that itself. If it has one arm, it can use it to, to, uh, to install in itself other things. Can it pick itself up and fall over? Well, the idea is that it shouldn't fall over. It, it, uh, <laughs> it, 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 prob it probably can, actually. I, I know the, the Ibo robot, does, uh, that's one of its best tricks, it, <laughs> is, is to uh, stand up. So, so I, I, I think so. C certainly, this this uh, this shaft uh, uh, would have to be strong enough to, to achieve that, and, and all you'd need is then an, an arm sticking out at the right angle. Uh, but, but in fact, it should have a really good sense of balance, <laughs> and and it should never get to to a to a point where it's tipped over that far. Uh, so, so I, I see that that this is the beginning of a of a long evolution, several decades at least about the same time scale as, as the speakers have all been talking about, uh, say, say 30 years, 30, 40 years even. And in that, uh, these machines become gradually more capable. The first generation simply runs application programs. The uh, second generation, maybe 10 years later, uh, has conditioned learning ability. The first generation, by the way, is, is comparable to, to a lizard <laughs> on, on, on that scale. Uh, a second generation to a mouse, and uh, it, it uh, can, can learn to, to tweak its actions. The, the individual uh, um, steps in the, in the application program have alternatives, and those are, ba those are modulated on the, on the basis of, of learning that, that happens internally uh, because there are modules that detect good and bad conditions and send conditioning signals. Uh, a third generation that is able to model the world, both physically, uh, culturally and uh, psychologically and, and use the simulation of the world to rehearse its actions so it can learn mentally before it does things physically and learns faster. It can also imitate and we're, we're, uh, we're, we're down to the fourth generation which, which takes the third generation which provides a, a uh, physical to symbolic conversion in, in the simulator because the simulator has to be kept tuned to the external world uh, but, but because if, if uh, simulations don't act the same way as the actual physical performance later, then the simulation is tweaked. So, and the simulation therefore provides 
ultimately a, a, a good model, which is, however, labeled in terms of uh, cultural properties, what things are, what their name is, and, and how they're usually used. Psychological properties, uh, how various actors in the world feel about things, which is important be because you you don't want to do something to an, to a, a human being, you be, meaning the robot, uh, or or some other, or even some other robot that will cause negative conditioning in in them. Well, there you go. Uh, and, and, and in fact, uh, they're, they're, uh, you, you'd want the conditioning module to, to accept human input. So you say, don't, just don't do that. Uh, but also, it should know that, that you like to watch the X-Files, you see, so it has, to, it has to have an idea of some of your likes. And, and in fact, the third generation robot, you can have a simple-minded conversation with about how it feels and how you feel and you know, what its plans are for the day and what you're, you know. Uh, but it, it doesn't understand anything about the outside of the house, just, just concrete things in concrete places. So, so the fourth generation adds a, a, a generalization layer to that, a reasoning program, which, which takes abstract, abstracted information out of the simulator, reasons about it, and then reinstantiates it into actual simulations. In fact, can use the, the simulations to help it with its abstract reasoning uh, because it can go make an abstract plan, instantiate it, and if it doesn't work out in the simulation, then obviously something's wrong with it. Too. So. There we go. <laughs> and uh, thank you.